Up next, Rodney and I put the nuts and bolts on a grain bin. There you go. But this kind has a much nobler job than protecting grain. And our heartbeat was, what can we do to help these orphans? And then, from up in the air, <laughs> to down on the farm, <laughs> we hit the heights in Door County, Wisconsin. Welcome to Small Town Big Deal. I'm Rodney Miller. And I'm Jan Carl. You know, have you ever watched the news and there was a natural disaster and you wish there was a way you could help? That's exactly what happened to an Iowa farmer after the devastating earthquake in 2010 in Haiti. So this farmer and his close friend came up with a plan and now they're helping people all over the world. The earthquake rocked this impoverished Caribbean nation late this afternoon. The 7.0 quake was centered roughly 10 miles from the capital city, Port-au-Prince. Our story begins with Ken DeYoung, a farmer and a pilot from Iowa. We met up with him in Newton, Iowa, to learn how a vision of hope rose out of the rubble of Haiti's catastrophe. What took you to Haiti in the first place? I got an email three days after the earthquake. And this group in the Bahamas said we're looking for planes and pilots and found myself in Fort Lauderdale yet that day and heading to Haiti. So you were flying week. from the Bahamas to Haiti with supplies? Yes. It was life changing the first time I landed just to see the desperation in the eyes of people that we saw. Devastation everywhere. No food, no water. March 6th was going to be my last day in Haiti. And that day, I met Eddie Constant and 15 little girls that messed up my life. <laughs> Eddie Constant, a man who started an orphanage for girls, took Ken to meet all 15 of them. Ken couldn't stop thinking about what would happen to those girls. My wife was in uh, Nassau waiting for me, and I said, this is not over. I just knew it as real as you and I standing here today. It just transformed my life. So was that the beginning of Go Serve Global? Yes. I'm a farmer. I'm not a missionary. <laughs> so we got together with Terry and Debbie and talked about what this might mean. Terry and Debbie Baxter have over 40 years in ministry in the U.S. and overseas. He's a former member of the Iowa House of Representatives and a man can trust. And then Ken and I were debriefing each other and just crying. I mean, we were literally crying. And our heartbeat was, what can we do to help these orphans? Yeah. Right. Since those early days of establishing Go Serve Global, there have been many more moments seared into Ken's heart. We were walking down the street, and this lady came up and asked me to hold her baby. And I thought, I like to hold babies. Yeah. Eddie looked at me, he said, you know what she means? She wants me to take this baby because she can't care for it. I just fell apart. I don't know how you can walk away from those kinds of things and go home and just forget about that and not do something. One of the first things GoServe did was to partner with a well-known Iowa-based farm supply company, Sukup Manufacturing, for an unlikely and amazing engineering solution. One of the main issues is shelter, so behold, the safety home. It can be built in one day, but it has a useful life of 75 years. You know, I've been in grain bins my whole life, but I never thought about them as a home. We assembled one for one of their events. There you go. They have a roof system designed to keep the rain out, but keep it cool inside. Then we put the heat shield roof over the top. They are stormproof, have locking doors and windows, a loft for beds, and are likely the first safe home its new residents have ever had. Yeah. Shipping costs aside, a safety home is roughly $6,000. But to pay for the first round of homes desperately needed in Haiti, a miracle was needed. Along came Bill Northey, the then Iowa Secretary of Agriculture. What better thing for an ag state than to take grain bins that are solid, can last through yeah. hurricanes and earthquakes. And so when they approached us about 
promoting an effort to be able to raise some money to do it, we jumped at it and said this is a great thing. GoServe Global now has safety homes in Haiti, Peru, Kenya, Uganda, and Liberia, and serves in other ways around Africa as well as in Guatemala and India. What's the reaction of a family that gets to have a safety home? The tears start flowing right away. And, and the little kids all of a sudden realize, I've got a place that I can live in. Yeah. Along with homes, Go Serve Global has built medical clinics, birthing centers, schools and churches, and has grown with dedicated board members and volunteers who assist on mission trips. Their question is, why would you come all this way just to see me? You know, I'm just, I'm just me. And that in itself is so impactful and encouraging. To deliver hope, is helping drill a well so that they have clean water. One of the exciting things about going on a trip and why it changes you, you hear things you've never heard before. You see things you've never seen before. It's just indescribable the feeling that you get that they have got security. GoServe Global also helps here at home, like when tornadoes struck Kentucky in 2021 and Iowa in 2022. We cleaned up most of those properties and I think we ended up tearing down about uh, 15 of those homes. God just brings people together to move mountains that we never dreamed could move. That's and that's an awesome thing. In order to move those mountains, sometimes it takes someone who plants the seeds of change. And who better to do that than a farmer? And the need throughout the world is huge. What was Jesus' heart? Yeah. Care for the widows and orphans. And why wouldn't he bless a ministry that's after his own heart. The sky's the limit. You can help and make a difference in the lives of so many. Go to goserveglobal.org slash STBD. Grab a spatula. Coming up next on Small Town Big Deal. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Simmer down, Chad. I've got things under control. Time is definitely not on your side here, though. <laughs> Welcome back to Small Town Big Deal. You know, on the show, we like to take you to festivals you've never been to, tell you stories you've never heard, and show you sites you have never seen before. Like this, a restaurant with a roof that looks more like a golf course. And has a very unusual lung care service. <laughs> it's 8.30 in the morning in Sister Bay, Wisconsin, and some of the staff of Al Johnson's Swedish restaurant are just getting to work. Here we go. Here we go, here we go. Let's go, kids. Come on, Snowflake, let's go. These kids have it pretty good. Oh my gosh, yeah. this is beautiful. The view these employees get to enjoy is one of the best in all of Tiny Sister Bay, population a mere 900. The village sits about 75 miles northeast of Green Bay in the heart of spectacular Door County, which is often referred to as Cape Cod of the Midwest. Come here, pretty girl. And while Green Bay's got the Packers, Sister Bay's got Al Johnson's and its own team of all-stars. Good morning, good morning. What are some of the most typical questions you get? Like when someone comes here for the first time and they see this roof and these goats? Well, first and foremost, I think a lot of people are surprised. Are they real? And people will go, they're not real. And then they'll realize, well, wait a minute, they move. They just move. <laughs> and they often ask about what do we do with the goats in the wintertime? And what do you do with them? Well, we always say that they go to the mountains or they go to Arizona or they go to Florida. They go to Florida. <laughs> However, the reality is, is that they've got a great red Wisconsin barn and they've got 40 acres to roam, and that's their home. Yeah. Lars Johnson, along with his brother Rolf and sister Annika, keep the family's restaurant going strong that his dad started in 1949. How did this even come to be in the first place, this grass roof? My parents wanted something extremely authentically Scandinavian. So in 1973, they made a trip to Scandinavia, and they found out that in Norway, they were still building these type of structures. So eager to expand their original restaurant, Al and his wife Ingert hired a team of carpenters from Norway to build a traditional log structure, and then they shipped that baby all the way to Sister Bay. <laughs> well, then once it got here, they reassembled it and put the sod roof on. And there's six inches of topsoil on here along with the sod. Then it acts as a insulator both in the summer and in the winter. 
But Al Johnson's is way more than just that place with the goats on the road. Inside, it's like a little bit of Sweden, right here in the Great Lakes. Customers can shop in the restaurant's all things Scandinavian boutique, which is chock full of Al Johnson's signature goodies. But lest we forget, with 3,000 meals a day served here, <laughs> there's some serious food going on. Yeah, like nearly 300,000 Swedish meatballs served every year. Or how about 110,000 plates of Swedish pancakes? Traditionally, these super flat delicacies were served in Swedish homes on Thursday nights, but only after a hearty meal of pea soup. <laughs> but nowadays, they're piled high with lingonberries and whipped cream, and any time is the right time. Yeah. All right, you're all suited up? i right, suit right, up. Then we're going in. Enter Rolf Johnson, Lars' brother, who's been whipping up Swedish pancakes since his mother taught him as a wee lad. How old were you when you started making these? I started when I was six, and it took about ten minutes. Show off. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just one across and five down. Okay. And then let's just flip the kiss. <laughs> I can't even flip the small round ones in I, I got a feeling that's a lot harder than it looks. Yeah. Grab a spatula. Choke up on it, though. Let's make the corners. Whoa, 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 whoa. That one's gonna be goat food. Another? Hey. Time is definitely not on your side here, though. Oops. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. It'll be me next. <laughs> so I, I put the bad one on bottom. I would. Underneath. And that bad one kind of underneath. Let's see how good you are. She might have you. I'm afraid she has. I think she's gonna whoop me. Now five. Now you're gonna get four out of that. <laughs> I'm not so good at the flipping. Get some spring to the spatula. Go this way. That's what you did. How come you keep giving her pointers and I didn't get any pointers? She's prettier. Oh, golly. Well, that one's kind of shaped like the state of Michigan here. It is. That was Alabama right there. There's Mississippi. Artisan. Artisan. Well, they may not have looked too perfect, but as we used to say in my house growing up, they're all going to the same place. Oh, boy, go. All right. Tuesday, you're on the schedule. <laughs> I hope it's a slower day than Saturday. <laughs> when we come back... <laughs> more from Door County, Wisconsin. Here you go, buddy. Hey! From down on the farm to up in the air. <laughs> Don't you swing it. Stop it. No, stop it! I, when we get down to land, you're in so much trouble. Welcome back to Small Town Big Deal and our visit to beautiful Door County, Wisconsin. So, Jan, I'm kind of wondering, how did they get the name Door County? Well, I happen to know the answer. Yes. You do? Yes. Early French explorers called it Porte de Mont, or Death's Door. Nice accent. Merci. Well, they called it that. <laughs> you didn't know I knew that. They called it that because legend has it there were so many fierce and deadly battles between warring local Indian tribes. Well, you know, you learn something every day on Small Town Big Deal. With nearly 300 miles of shoreline, Door County is a water lover's paradise and a great family recreation destination. So our next stop is the village of Ephraim, population about 300, where thanks to Captain Doug and Wisconsin Water Wings, we set out to do a little parasailing and get a bird's eye view of things. We're going to go out a little ways. We're going to go out beyond the island and around. Now, I've gone parasailing a few times and been fine, which is really kind of strange because I'm not that good with heights. That's putting it mildly. He's terrible with heights. Me? I'm good. Never had a problem with it. You ready? You nervous? A little bit. So the thing about parasailing, you're strapped into a harness which is attached to a parachute. Here we go. Woohoo! The boat takes off and the next thing you know, it is up, up and away. <laughs> Whoa! Holy cow! Wow! That was a run. <laughs> okay, we're really high. Yeah, this makes me a little more nervous. Oh my gosh, look how high up we are. Woo! Woo! What was that? I think it's some kind of malfunction. Stop it. He's being mean, trying to scare me. Look way over there. Is that Michigan over there? I got to admit, the view is spectacular. Wow, I think I see Chicago. Green Bay would be right up there. Hmm, Green Bay. I'm going to be green pretty soon. Are you swinging it? No, not really. I'm not kidding. Rodney swinging her harness thingy, it's making me really uneasy. Woo! We're just swinging. Whoa! Stop it! 
I, when we get down to land, you are in so much trouble. What? I, I wasn't doing anything. I think I'm a little seasick. Are you really getting sick? A little bit. Well, throw up that way. <laughs> <laughs> think I'll push you over? No, there? don't! <laughs> oh my, I really will puke. <laughs> I'm going to throw up, and I'm not going to turn my head to the left. Mercifully, Captain Doug started reeling us back in. Here we go, baby. See that X marks the spot? Yep, that's where we come in. Feet first. It's never been happier to have two feet on the ground or on a boat, whichever. She got a little sick. You're right, you do get a little seasick up there. I'm green. After Jan got her color back and we took a little break, our final stop was down to Sturgeon Bay and the ultimate family-friendly destination, the farm. Situated just 50 miles north of Green Bay, the farm builds itself as a living museum of rural America. And boy, is it ever. Since it first opened in 1966, this 40 acres is a throwback to a simpler time. It's a place where kids and grown-ups alike can get up close and personal with a literal barnyard full of animals. And feeding is encouraged, especially by the goats. Oh, he likes that. Oh my gosh, look how fast it goes down. <laughs> can I just move in? I don't mean to laugh at you. I don't mean to laugh at you. Shirley and her family bought the farm in 2002. You not only have a fun place for people to come, you're doing a lot of education here too. Definitely. That's a big part too. And I always think the good Lord directed me into this because I love children and uh, this way you, they learn so much. One of the many things visitors to the farm can learn how to milk a goat. Okay. You guys ready? Yeah. I think so. Our teacher, 14-year-old Jake Flieger. So what you want to do is close off real tight up top first like that. Then you want to squeeze. Oh, you're a good teacher. <laughs> Thanks. See? So how much milk will come out of her? Uh, well, this goat, we have to milk three times a day. So three times a day? Yeah. Like, so one third each time we have to milk out. <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted. Yeah. <laughs> Before Jan nailed me with an eye full of goat's milk, we moved on to see some of the other livestock. Yeah, we That's a big old bull over there. Yes. Uh, his name is Jerry. Jerry. And I, you do need to feed him. Oh, yeah? Yes. <laughs> He's got some pretty big teeth there. I wouldn't want to let him clamp down on me. He's been trained. <laughs> you should see the look on your face right now. This old boy was one of a kind. I would do this for a french fry. <laughs> here you go, buddy. And he scores! <laughs> there you go. There's a lot to do. People come and they'll stay for hours. And... Yeah. Rodney knows he would have a very hard time getting me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> we, we may be here for a while. <laughs> We hope you've enjoyed this episode of Small Town Big Deal. And Jan, for myself, I'm glad I didn't go through my whole life without eating at a restaurant that had goats on, on the, the roof. roof. <laughs> and pretty good Swedish pancakes. Yeah. Door County is a great family destination for your vacation, for sure. <laughs> and Jan and I and our entire Small Town Big Deal team are honored to tell you the story of Go Serve Global and to be partnering with them. You know, the love and the care that they show to people in need around the world has truly touched our hearts and inspired both of us. Mm. So go to their website and join Jan and I in making a difference. I'm Rodney Miller. And I'm Jan Carl. Join us again next week when once again we celebrate the great stories from across America. Aren't you supposed to be helping? I am Not helping. supervising? I'm, I'm putting boats through and nets on. Both. I'm doing both jobs at the same time. Well, look at how many I did. Is that oh, you only That's did good. those? I'm proud of you. Look at all these. You did good. Did you see all those? You did good. You did awesome. You know what? No, Terry. He's just supervising. <laughs>